You're listening to the Colby Cheese Gaming Podcast, your source for League of Legends news, updates, and discussions. Today is podcast number 29. Yo, what's up guys? Kobe Cheese here. And guess what? It's time for another of my podcasts. Got lots of good stuff to talk about. This week there is a brand new patch. Ari, the champion we've been waiting for for several months, has finally been released. Well, it'll probably be released by the time I release this podcast, but it's still not released as of doing it. So that's why I'm doing the podcast right now. I was like, damn it! But anyways, I'm sure you guys are tired of waiting as well. But uh, yeah, a lot of cool news. Obviously, my new channel is live. So if you are interested in watching any of my gameplays or Let's Play style videos, then go ahead and subscribe to that channel. And for the rest of you who just want to see the League of Legends content, uh, League of Legends content, then you don't have to worry about your inboxes being spammed with all of the Let's Play stuff. So that should be good for everyone. Win-win situation there. And uh, I will probably post occasional non-League of Legends stuff on this channel. For example, I'll probably just post up when I'm doing new games on my other channel, or I'll put up like, uh, you know, just like big announcement stuff. But my actual like Let's Play, like those, you know, tons of videos, I'll be just leaving those on the other channel. Um, also, if you haven't noticed already, be sure to check out my actual channel page because I just recently got a new background and it was done very nicely. I have to give the guy props. It's the same guy who did Husky and HD StarCraft's channel and uh, I think he did a great job. If you guys uh, have anyone that needs their own channel background done, definitely uh, I re recommend him. Go to my channel page. His, his uh, YouTube link is on the bottom left and you can check that out there. So uh, anyways, guys, a little bit of news on WCG, which just happened. Uh, obviously, I didn't actually cast that, but we, uh, we do know that CDE, otherwise known as Chicks Dig Elo, wins that. That's the USA team, so hell yeah, go USA. Great job in those uh, matches. I believe that CLG took third behind Poland. I don't know if that's true or not. I, I just know that Poland beat them. But anyways, that uh, was a pretty good uh, set of matches there. It was really exciting. Unfortunately, there wasn't like too great of cast. I know they had some mix-ups there, but whatever. So speaking of Chicks Dig Elo... I, uh, I think I may have confirmation on that, actually, and I found this clip online. Because if you ever meet a League of Legends girl and you want to get with her, there's only two things that really matter, guys. One, that you're a nice guy, and two, that you have high ELO. Yep, there you go, guys. Hot Asian girl gives relationship advice. It must be right. Anyhow, lots of cool changes in this last patch. Let's go ahead and talk about, first of all, the new runes that were added in and whether or not you guys should check those out or pick any of them up and what those benefits are going to be, etc. You've got new lifesteal and spell vamp runes that you can get. That's going to give you 6% total if you get all three quints. I don't really believe that it's worth getting the lifesteal ones. Um, I could kind of see the spell vamp being slightly useful on some champions. However, for the most part, I'm still going to be sticking to flat AD or flat AP runes on my AD or my AP carries. Uh, there's also some 9 pin slash 4.5 pin hybrid marks. That's if you get all 9, obviously. And uh, I can see those being strong on certain champions like Kale or Teemo. Some champions such as those will use those. I'm probably not going to buy them. Once again, I'll just stick to what I've already got. But maybe that's just because I don't play too many hybrid champions lately. But if I did, then I could see myself grabbing those. It's just that they are kind of expensive right now. As for the other ones that were added in, I think they're complete crap. Let me tell you why. Um, first of all, you've got 4.5% extra HP on either three quints or on nine seals. So at first you might say, well, that's pretty good. But if you do the math and compare it to the HP per level seals, you realize that in order for the runes to be even worth it, you have to have like over, I think, 2,000, or sorry, over like 4,000 HP for the 4.5% extra HP quints to even be as good as the HP per level. So honestly, it's nowhere near as good as the HP per level. It's just pretty much a wasted rune. I would not buy them. They're not good. Uh, as far as the gold per 10 seals, uh, if you get all three of those 
then, um, or actually, sorry, if you get all nine, they're, they're seals, not quints. If you get all nine, that'll give you 2.25 gold per 10, which is about 405 gold at 30 minutes. The only champion I can really see this being viable on is Soraka, because she doesn't really need anything but lots of gold. Um, personally, I've been running like mad AP on her. I just run like full AP page, just so that I can have big heals. But, um, that's just my playstyle. I don't really like to play support. Uh, talking to some of my friends who do play support, they feel that it's nice to have on her on any, pretty much most of the other champions. I don't know if I would, I would like it that much. So, you just have to judge whether you think that one Oracle's over the course of the game is worth sacrificing that extra AP or something like that for. So that's kind of my take on the runes. Now, the other patch changes I'm just gonna run through real quick and just talk about the ones that I, I found interesting. They tweaked Fizz early game from the changes. They, they reduced the damage on his W a little bit. Uh, I think he's still gonna wreck late game. I played a little bit on him and he's still pretty damn strong. It's just that, uh, of course, he's gonna have a little bit harder time in the lane and uh, it reduces his combo a little bit. Probably hurts his jungle a bit as well. Uh, they toned down Cassidy's ultimate cooldown, so that's gonna make it less, uh, I guess, less possible for him to just jump around and kill everybody very quickly. It is a very short cooldown anyways, so I think that that's a smart change on to Cassidy. They gave some slight tweaks to Lux. I'm not sure if it's gonna give her uh, the improvement that she needs to be uh, seen very often in games. I know that people pick Leona. She's a very strong champion and she does kind of uh, a job of what Lux would do, which is, you know, stopping people and uh, doing some stuff like that. Well, I don't know. You can't really compare the two, to be honest. But Lux is more of the long range, add extra damage to a team fight style support with that extra shield, which the shield is hard to use, to be honest. I don't know. They, they gave her more base stats on her shield and more cooldown, uh, sorry, less cooldown on her binding. So, uh, I, I guess that it's nice. I mean, she's okay, but uh, I don't I don't know if that's gonna make her like overboard enough to be used as opposed to other supports in the lane. Pantheon mana buffs definitely very much needed. His mana costs were extremely high on his ultimate and his stun, and especially if you play Jungle Pantheon, which I've been playing Jungle Pantheon for a really long time, and people keep telling me I'm dumb, but I'm seeing a lot of high healer, well, not a lot, but I've, I've been hearing that a lot of higher elo people are starting to play him. I think Atlanta did it in a tournament or something like that, so it might start getting more popular now, but I, I think that uh, in the jungle, he does have huge, huge mana issues, especially if you're going to be giving the blue to the mid, which most junglers usually need to do. In any case, Sivir Tweaks, they tried to tone her down a bit, but I don't think it was that big of a deal at all. She's still just as strong, it's just less base burst from uh you know from her boomerang early on in the lane uh it still has the same scaling and then they actually improved the aoe damage from her her little ricochet so i don't know i think sivir is just as good she's she's not hurt at all targeting targeting has been improved on sona and on tf where it's not going to automatically target people once you get your your card up on tf or when you get your passive built up on sona so that makes it easier for you to not mess up basically so more Ease of use, I'd say, on those champions. Pretty cool. And uh, I was laughing at this one, but they nerfed the dodge off of Udir, but didn't give him anything to compensate. So that's just going to make it easier for people to face him in the lane, especially if you're an AD on top lane. Um, really, really good stuff. And then, obviously, Winter Map. Yeah, buddy. Winter Map. I do like this one. If you guys remember the old Winter Map, it was actually kind of laggy and the snow was real annoying. I do like the new Winter one. It looks a lot better. So, um, Good stuff here, although, I don't know. I don't know if I like it more than the regular one or not. But it is nice to have somewhat of a change in scenery for once. That's pretty much it for the changes. Obviously, we're going to have Ari uh, come out real soon. But I'll talk about here in just a second. First of all, I want to show you guys this really cool uh, music song parody thing that uh, my friends at Collective created and it's about Brand's ult. Now, I'm not usually a fan of like rap style songs and stuff like that, but uh, after listening to it like two or three times and my roommate listened to it, we we're like, you know what, this is a pretty damn good song and I think these guys did a great job on it, so I'll let you check it out real quick. They don't see why it is only you I play. All we do is AOE, all game flame on. That's how we do it. That's how we do and it. All we do is light it up all game. All you see is brands all brands out. Brands all. 
Not bad, not bad. These guys continue to put out great songs, so as always, be sure to support them. They are a great channel overall. Now, uh, so the new champion, you can check out her dance here. I found this little video, and uh, it's got a nice little song to it. But uh, the cool thing is that the I found out also that the dance is inspired by this Korean, I think it's Korean song or something like that's what I heard anyways. You guys can check it out here. You better run, run. Damn, this podcast is already packed full of hot Asian awesomeness, right? <laughs> nah, anyways. There's some pretty neat skins out for the uh, snow patch, I guess. We've got the Christmas tree, Maokai, and Snowmerdinger. He's like he's like Snowman Heimer. That's pretty cool. I actually like that one. He's like throwing out these little candy canes or something. There's a frosty LeBlanc. I don't really care. I don't play LeBlanc. And a nice little toy soldier gangplank. That's actually kind of neat. Um, anyways, I don't care that much about skins. What I found really interesting though is that Leecraft found, well, I don't know if it was Leecraft, but they, they posted this anyways. They, uh, they showed that there was a leaked new champion called Victor and we've already got word of all of his abilities and we're, look, we're able to see his skins as well. So new champion looks pretty cool. I know that since it is still two weeks until the next one comes out that he is probably going to have tweaks to the numbers and things like that. So anything that you, you see leaked on him is still going to be in testing phase heavily for sure. But I think it's a cool concept they're actually adding in and that is that he starts off with this item which you can be augmented one of three ways and depending on how you augment that item it will change one of your three base abilities not your ultimate of course and it'll also have an active effect on it which you can use so that's kind of neat that you can do that not only that uh, but the the item will, will have different stats based on how you augment it and you can't actually sell that item back it's it's part of who Victor is so I don't know if they're gonna give him an extra item slot or if that's actually gonna be one item slot that he's always gonna have and you can't do anything about it in any case it's pretty cool I think it's a neat concept anyways and he's got some really interesting abilities like his ultimate allows him to put down the singularity that damages people and he can move the singularity around and uh, he's also got an ability that is kind of like a death ray he'll use this robotic arm thing to fire a beam it cuts down the field in like a line and it'll deal damage to anyone that's that's caught in the path of the line so some kind of like line nuke I guess I don't know if it's supposed to be similar to uh, Xerath's I'm not sure and then he's also got a gravity field which will slow down uh, enemies and it, uh, it's actually a stacking debuff, I guess. At three stacks, the target gets stunned. So that's kind of interesting how that works. And then he's got one that is called Power Transfer. And what it does is it blasts an enemy for like a nuke damage. And then it returns 40% of the damage that it deals as a shield. So it's going to be... Uh, he's gonna have the option of being kind of like a tanky AP style champion kind of a neat idea and I'm curious to see how it works out now the other thing is the the way he, that he gets augmented is uh, is interesting too so like on his Q which is his power transfer the little nuke one if he uses that and he's got the augment for his Q he'll get a 30% speed boost and then on his uh, gravity field if he augments that one, he gets a 30% extra cast range on it. And then for the death ray, he gets an additional 30% magic damage over the next four seconds if he augments that. So a lot of different options. You're gonna have to decide early on in the game, like, okay, how do I wanna play Victor? Do like, how do I wanna augment his abilities? So a lot of choice there, and it sounds like it could be high skill cha champion, skill cap, sorry. But I'm not sure. Obviously, it's very early. It's not even announced by Riot yet, so we'll just have to wait and see. But the game files are definitely there, so I'm sure that this champion will be released. Anyways, that's what I got about the releases and patch stuff, all that good stuff, etc. But I did find one really interesting video, and this is something I was actually thinking about a long time ago. I was like, you know, how do champions actually taunt other champions? Like, what is the strategy behind this? Do they like look at them and make a funny face or something? But somebody was actually able to make a video here explaining to us how Ramus actually taunts other champions. Let me know what you guys think about this one. Merry go round. I want a pony for Christmas. Go break your back on a mountain. Go build yourself a hug box. What are you, 15? 
I'm going to stick you in a window and cool my house. Princess Jarvin want to play dress up. Real weapon wouldn't help. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Good job, man. So just a little bit more before I'm done with my podcast today. Uh, that's all for League of Legends. But I do have to say that I'm super excited. I just watched the VGAs. Um, that's the Video Game Awards for those of you that are not good with acronyms. Anyways, they showed off the Diablo 3 opening cinematic. I was super excited. I was like, yes, Diablo 3 is only getting closer. Ah. And uh, <laughs> anyways, if you haven't seen it already, definitely check it out if you're a fan of Diablo. Um, really cool stuff. Actually, I'm not even going to show you a clip of that because you have to watch it on your own, but I'll put a link down below. I did, however, find a really funny video about the very first Diablo, and this one's called How Diablo Actually Destroyed Tristram, and this is a good one. Check it out. What is that? It's a town portal. You opened a portal from hell to our town? Um... <laughs> Everyone, stay calm! We need to stick together and- Oh no! no don't take me- Take Farnham! He's a drunk! Yeah, you definitely have to check that one out. Super funny, especially if you played the old Diablo. You always, you always, uh, <laughs> I never thought about it that way. Like, oh yeah, you just open a portal to town. I wonder if anyone else can walk through that. You know, all the demons from hell or whatever. Anyways, guys, uh, that's it for today's podcast. Again, don't forget, if you haven't already, go subscribe to my other channel. That is, obviously, if you want to see my playthroughs. If not, then whatever. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys around for the next one. It was definitely a pleasure, and I can't wait to play some Ari. I'll have my gameplay impressions of her up as soon as I can actually get on the servers and play her. But for now, this is Colby Cheese. Peace out.